Hey, St. Luke, St. Luke family, our well wishers, I guess. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in the day. I know there are storms have been uh, raging over the last couple of days, but if you're here under the sound of my voice and you hear me now, we thank God that things are as well with, with each of us as they are. I want you to know that you're not living on an island, that trouble is not just singing you out and, 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 and try to attack you. I want you to know you're not the only one blessed. Somebody else is being blessed by the master as well. So I'm just thankful uh, to you for uh, attending, uh, getting, being able to still worship with you in this environment. Like I said, we are excited that we are back in live worship at 930, uh, starting at 930 now. And we'll be doing that for for a while. We are arranging to have our young people a place, K through 12 at least right now. For worship experience, uh, those beyond that, parents, let's just bring them and keep them with us till we figure out how we can break that out. We do want to do that so that they can have um, a, a relative and relevant experience as well during the worship. We're at that time of year where we're getting toward graduation and, and young people getting back together again. Let's keep them in prayer because we remember how excited we got. Uh, when we were in this period, especially if you're a senior or a junior, if you're a junior, you're getting ready to go to proms and stuff. If you're a senior, you're getting ready to get out of school, and there were a whole bot lot of shenanigans going on uh, April, May time. A whole lot of shenanigans, uh, as I remember, in, in my uh, young days. So our young people are no different. In fact, they have more opportunities and more stuff to do. They'll need a deeper prayer. Parents, loved ones, guardians, let's ask God to hold them in the very hollow of his hand because there's more that they're exposed to than many of us were exposed to. More dangers out there as well. So let's remember this is that time of year we keep our young people in, in, in uh, grade school, keep our young people in the high school, let's keep our young people in in prayer all right all right it's time for prayer and it's time for for worship and it's time for a word so i want you to remember the season that we're in well next week we will we'll observe our sacrificial week which is what we at saint luke do we start next sunday then we'll set up the sanctuary with um, incense candles fire and um, the, the sanctuary will be open for prayer uh, periodically through the day. You'll just call in and just sign up. I think it'll be an online thing to sign up if you want to come in and pray. But the sanctuary will be set up 24-7 for those who want to come and pray. You'll have to let us know if you're going to do it in, you know, it's an evening hour at what time so that we'll be able to uh, record that so someone will make sure they're here. If no one is praying, then we'll we'll leave everything set up. But we will have prayer next week. You can come throughout uh, next week, the next Saturday evening, the following Saturday evening, 16th before Easter, and you can have time in the sanctuary. You, you and your family can come and uh, go before the Lord in your own prayer. Your prayer request. Make sure you write out your prayer request. You can send them on email to someone you can bring them an envelope but leave them here our prayer box will be uh in the sanctuary and uh, there'll be those reaching into those by that prayer box and praying for those who uh have prayer requests i'm excited about it because we're coming up to resurrection sunday it's always a reminder for me that jesus got up from the worst state and with him on our side we can get up from any state Amen. He, he, that's that's what the lesson is for me. He went through, down through there, as we say, and uh, all the way down, but he, but he got up. Amen. It encourages me, looking at my life, know that you can rise beyond the things that the devil try to destroy. Hallelujah. You will. He may get you down, but give him a moment. Trusting in God. You, you ought to say that with me. I'll get up, devil. I will get up. Knock me down. I will get up because there's something inside greater than that that's in the world. 
We know the world is the prince of the power of the air is Satan. But I got something on the inside. Been endowed with his honor, the Holy Ghost. I can get knocked down, but he gets me back up. Okay, it's prayer time. 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 I want you to lay on your heart. That that you want asking God to lay his powerful hands on whatever, whatever that is. Lay it on the altar of your heart. Lord, help me with it. It might be students trying to graduate from college and a high school and they're struggling. Lord, uh, I'm laying it on my heart. I, I'm having anxiety about the test and the things that I need to be completed. God, just lay it on your heart and then trust God. Do your best. And you trust God for the rest. Amen. 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 If you, if you ask God to take the anxiousness, the worry away, and you do your best and let God do the rest, young person out there, worrying about whether you're going to get a scholarship, or you're going to get this, or you're going to get that. With God, all things are possible. And then when you don't get specifically what you ask for, work and praise God for what you do get and make the best of it because God has a significant plan for you that sometimes we have to go through different chambers, chambers we don't otherwise want to go through in life to get to God. God has to send you through things uh, and, 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 and stru struggles to sculpture you into what God would have you to be. Amen. Because he knows your uh, tomorrow and he can get you ready uh, today. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray. I want you to think about the people where bombs are falling, where children being killed, people being executed, women being raped and executed, indiscriminate bombs, dangerous bombs falling. And we don't know the end, but I know that the Lord has the power to change things. Let's prepare. I need you all, we need you, every, every hour, we need you, oh bless, bless us now please, say, oh Savior, here we are, we come, to, to thee, we need thee, oh, we need thee, every, every hour, Lord, we need thee, oh, bless us, yes, Lord, bless us now, dear, say, Dear Savior, we come to come to Thee. O Lord our God, how excellent is Your name in all the earth at all times and in all situations. You are God, God all by Yourself. Father, here we are as Your helpless children. Don't have the strength, the intellect, the know-how to protect ourselves from the onslaught of things occurring and coming to us and toward us and attacking us. But God, I know that you know. Build a hedge around us now in the name of Jesus. God, as we bow, we first want to say thank you for blessings that we've already received. Things as simple as a bed to sleep in, things as simple as waking up in the morning, things which seem taken for granted as clothes and food, as friends, God, as safety, driving up and down roads, not worrying about missiles or bombs. God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for it. And Father, we ask that your will be done, that you have your way. Let your name be glorified in the works 
your name be glorified in the will. Your name be glorified in the ways of Jesus Christ. And help us, O oh God, as you indwell us by your spirit to reflect who you are in our behavior, in our conduct, in our attitude. Have each of us to understand that you've divested, you've put a gift in us, not to hold it in this shelter and hide, but to use for your glory, blessing someone else. Help us, O oh God, and not be introverted Christians, not be introverted with our gifts, but use them to your glory, O oh God whatever that gift may be. And Father, we say thank you. Help us to understand that gift hoarding can be harmful. Gift that we have that we don't use for your glory can harm us. And we get caught up in the shell of ourselves. So God, help us to release. Help us to release. I believe that gifts are, are depressing some folk because they won't release based upon whatever. God, I know if you can use, you can use me, you can use anyone, God. Use, you use, you use a broke man, Lazarus, to teach a deep lesson. You, you use the broke woman that had one penny to teach a deep, have us to know, Father, that you can use us. The other thing, God, is sometimes we think we have to have ability Help us, oh God, to understand that often we just need to be available to let us use you. So God, let your will be done on earth as in heaven. And then, then Father, give us that that we need to glorify you according to our faith. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For you are the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Thank you for allowing us to have confidence in the reality that you are our father and we are your children. Help us not to look at our faults to beat ourselves down. When we look, help us to learn how to change them from fault to favor. Help us, oh God, to realize that as a, as, as a father and figure, you love us um, unconditionally. Teach us that, O oh God, but teach us not to be uh, loose. Teach us not to be, um, to have caution with that. To, to always want to um, have favor by living uh, the life that's taught by your son, Jesus. We say thank you. Thank you for St. Luke. Thank you for Mount Olive. Hold us in the hollow of your hand. God, we pray for those lands where people are dying indiscriminately. We pray, God, that you would touch the heart and mind of whoever can fix it and, and change it, God. Touch, 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 oh God, with your powerful hand. It's only you can in Yemen, in, 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 in Ethiopia, in, in Ukraine. Touch, oh God, with your powerful hand. We say thank you, God. We give you glory. We give you honor, God. We give you praise. Bless this word now, God. Use it. Use it to be a blessing to, to someone else. Use us, oh God, as a conduit to your righteousness. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, just for this word, I, this word has been bugging me and, and, and bothers me periodically, it shocked me when I first encountered it, and I've talked about it a little um, in different sermons, and maybe I've even preached a sermon about it before, but it's in Matthew chapter 5, and you know Matthew chapter 5 is the Sermon of the Mount on the Mount of Olives, I believe it is, and this is before Jesus had launched his ministry. He's just about to launch his ministry. And so we, we want you to turn there, and um, we want you to turn there for this, for this word. Turn there for this word. 
Matthew chapter Matthew chapter five. This this specific verses I want to read in Matthew chapter five. This is our lesson for today. Um, Jesus in the King James rendering, uh, he says these words during this this lesson where Jesus is teaching those who would be his followers, his disciples, a crowd of them will be. He's teaching them how to live in his under the rule of God, in the kingdom of God, under the king. If we're going to be his subjects, live under his rule, his will, and under his ways, and therefore under his protection and under his favor. You hear me say that? Living under his rule, his will, and his ways in obedience to them. We also live under his protections, his provision, and under his favor. Amen. There's a blessing in that. It seems like sometimes living his will, we can't have fun and things we can't do like others are doing. It seems that we, but baby, the favor of God, trust me when I tell you this. There's no joy like the joy when God is bestowing favor. Uh, so in favor uh, on you. So in chapter, the fifth chapter of Matthew, a portion of it I want to look at. It says, think not that I am come to destroy the law. Verse 17, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For truly I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot, one title shall in no way pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, he's talking about the law here, and shall teach men to do so, he shall be called the least, though in the kingdom. Of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, do and teach them, do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. It's a pivotal point, doing and teaching. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter the kingdom. Of heaven. This word is challenging because in that day there were no more religious, no more holy, no more close to God people as the scribes and the Pharisees, the lawyers. These are the ones who was the, the great deep theologians and thinkers and writers. These are the scholars who handled the word and wrote the word and um, what was it? wrote the word, it's not over, recopied the word and interpret the word to be taught. Scribes and the Pharisees, the Pharisees are religious leaders. And he does pick out the scribes and he picks out the Pharisees. He doesn't even put the Sadducees in here because they're about materialism anyway. They don't believe there's a heaven, don't believe in angels, don't believe. But anyway, he says the scribes because those were the ones who were looked to for leadership. I want, I want to just tag this text. Um, exceeding righteousness. And actually the lesson is about knowing as opposed to doing. Teaching as opposed to doing. And knowing is important. Teaching is important. But doing is what makes it uh, acceptable to God to know it study to show thyself to have the titles there's nothing wrong with that the positions there's nothing wrong with these religious positions but it's not position that the Lord looks at it's practice that the Lord looks at practice is where the power and the influences are the way, let me say, the way God 
um, responds, if you will, to our practice. It's what matters with the Lord. It's not that we claim a title. It's not that we claim a denomination. It's not that we claim to be a Christian. It's when we remember that Christians come from this idea of people with ways that are like and unto Jesus Christ. Ways that can be mirrored with the ways of Jesus to a very large degree. Ways that answer to the teaching and parallel life with the teachings of Jesus Christ. You can call yourself Christian all day. I know you're saying amen. But if your life don't back it up, it, your lips can say what your life deny. And Jesus in this lesson, now he's in the Sermon on the Mount. He's teaching how uh, you must live to be, um, to practice, how you must your life must practice these ways in order to your claim to be true. So in order to be a Christian, your life has to. Um, Christianity, Christian mean believing in Christ in a way that it shapes your behavior. And that, for me, it meant altering some things that I once did. He takes this little lesson and says to this crowd, now he's taught them some things, he taught them um, not um, based upon authority, but with authority. Now, let's talk about the difference. There are some men who have been given the authority based upon matriculation, men and women, education, certain schools, certain theological schools, and they come out with all the degree titles. And they have that authority. But Jesus didn't have any of that, but he taught with authority. Uh, he taught with authority. They thought taught by authority, but he taught uh, with authority. You know, he just taught not because someone had given them or educated him to, but he taught with the authority. And that authority in your teaching the word, the authority comes out of the life, not out of the words of your mouth, but out of the life that you live that are evidenced by the teachings of Jesus Christ and the word of God. Amen. That's deep right there. And he says in here, and this is what is challenging about this word. He said, unless your righteousness, he was talking to the, the, those who were following, your righteousness must exceed the Pharisees. I'm sure they became disheartened. What? The Pharisees, man, they got degrees in theology. They interpret uh, they got these positions. They have these positions in the temple. You know, they they have the dress, uh, and, and and you know they they have all of that. And they they're there, man. They're at all the sacrifice. They're there in every ceremony. They're there. They're fasting in the street. We see them, Jesus. They're there, man. They became disheartened. I'm sure to hear the what. I got to be a better. Saint, a better godly person than I perceive uh, that person in position, that person trained, that person from that great school. I, I gotta, I have to do what? He said, it gotta be better. And when he was talking about in his setting was the fact that the Pharisees uh, and the scribes were actually teaching, but they wouldn't do it. I think it's right there in the text. It stands out. He said, who shall, shall teach, shall do and teach them is great. But those who um, teach men so, he shall be called the least in the king. So Jesus is talking about teachers who talk one thing, but live another. Before we get there, throw it out. None of them and none of us are perfect. I don't I don't want to hear it talking about, well, I don't think you, but no, I'm not. I'm telling you up front, I'm not. But I'm certainly not going to teach you something uh, to live away 
then I'm not trying to live. Not that I don't fail here and there. I'm sure. In some of the places you may think someone fail may not be failure at all. It's a failure for you because you lying. Anyway, you, you laid something out or you made your commandment. Jesus says here, and he's talking about uh, these commandments. He's talking about them because what is going happening in the whole life of the master is he's going to do things that looks like he's defying the law. He's going to do things like heal on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a holy day, but healing is a holy thing as well. And healing is a holy thing that helps humanity. So Jesus wouldn't wait to Monday. Jesus would heal when he got that need. If it was a Sabbath, all that did was glorify the Sabbath and the Lord of the Sabbath. But the Sadducees, if you were sick on the Sabbath, if they could hear you, they wouldn't hear you. Then they get angry with anyone else because they're trying to keep the letter of the law. They're trying to show how religious they were, you see. And he said, your, your righteousness got to be better than church folk. And when I say that, I mean people who put the evidence of who they are in the title they have or the position they have or the fact they can attend this, that, and the other. And they're committed to this, that, or the other. Or the gifts that they have. Jesus said you got to have righteousness that exceeds the exterior. True righteousness comes from the inside and it affects what you do, how you do it, what you say, the way you see it, the attitude you have toward others, the joy you bring to others, the encouragement you bring to others, the help that you render, the sacrifices that you make for others. This, the Pharisees would teach, but there's a lesson, and it may be connected to this one. They'll teach, they were teaching the people to carry heavy burdens, but they wouldn't lift a finger to carry one themselves. Jesus, Jesus said, your righteousness has got to be better than people just, just going to church every Sunday. Or, or people in the pulpit with the robes on, but they... Um, doing everything else and you know about it your righteousness must exceed that exceed the scribes and the pharisees in the day of jesus this was a challenge of a great magnitude especially the people who sat in the pews as it were or the people in public who honored and respected them for their positions, for their titles, for their dress. Thought of them as close to God because they were always at the sacrifices, always at the ceremonies, paying their tithes of their uh, butterflower, um, butterflower, or the sunflower seeds, their deal seeds. They were just literally doing Doing it all, man. How can my righteousness exceed that? Jesus seemed to say, not that those things are not important, but there's more to it. The life that you live that encompasses all of that. See, eventually you'll get to do that through living for the Lord anyway. Those things will not even uh, they're just things to do. You see things different. Let's just take tithing for an example. You see tithing different when you begin to live before the Lord. You see tithing as giving God heals, but you also see God, tithing as a value return, not that you're looking for the return. You see it as trusting God. This is holy. This belongs to, to the Lord. I give this to the Lord. I'm not worried about the return and we, what he's promised he's going to do. It doesn't even become a thing to think about. It become a part of you. It become a part of your living. Nothing to brag. You don't even put it on your list of a didn't showing evidence that you're religious or that you love the Lord. You're just doing the right thing, literal thing by the Lord because you love the Lord that much. You love his word that much. Exceeding righteous. It's not to show off that you're tired. Not to make you, hey, hey, this, this, this lesson, uh, this lesson 
is 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 important because they were saying Jesus was dis disobeying the law, but from their hearts they were disobeying the law. They were trying to uh, preserve the God's word, but actually they were embalming embalming the the word of God. So it no longer had life. It was just a list of things they checked off to say, "See, God, I, you know, I went to church. I paid my tithe. Um, I gave to the poor. I prayed. See, I'm religious, but not lifting a hand to help others when we can. Not happy to help others." Try to go around the other way when we see people in need. Being vengeful toward even our brothers and our sisters instead of loving them through whatever the confusion they may have because I don't have confusion. I, that kind of, I don't, there's nothing wrong with me, baby. I'm going to love you. I'm going to treat you right even though you have a not such pleasant attitude. I can't let that change in my way toward you. He's talking about people, he's talking about the Pharisees whose practice was artificial because there was no practicum in life to make it real. They had positions, but they were positional hypocrites. Didn't have to say anything, but just because they had the position of the Pharisees and it was expected that they were living what they were teaching when they weren't doing. And that's what pops out in, in this lesson. He says, um, he says in this lesson, I'm not come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill. This is important. I came to fulfill. And I love this lesson because this idea because Jesus fulfilled the law, something I cannot literally do. But because I'm in Jesus, the law he fulfilled, the field in him, being in him means fulfilled for me. He fulfilled it for us. That's why we, we should give our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. He fulfilled the law for us. And therefore, I don't have to do stuff to be saved. I have to believe to be saved. And because I am saved, the Holy Power, the Holy Spirit is going to check my action, going to check my behavior, going to check my conduct. Check my attitude. Check my mindset. He's going to convict me because of conversion. And there's too many people running around talking about, I don't want to hear any negativity. You don't want to read the Bible. Oh, baby, I don't, I don't need no negativity. That's, that's just negative. Uh-uh. That's teaching us. That's critiquing us. It's, you don't have to actually get it from people. Read the word. The word alone. By himself, if you study the word, it will critique you. It will criticize us. It will convict us. That's what the word does. Conviction is not positive. That's negative. Mm. Too many people. I don't want no negative spirit. What do you mean negative spirit? Do you want truth? Truth can be can cause you conviction. You call it negative if you want to. I call it education. Learning and an opportunity to change. So, so, so they were had an external masquerade of righteousness that was not prompt by the inside. They were just trying to show others based on position, based upon theological training, based upon all of those things. They were just masquerading around in the external instead of living uh, the life from the internal. It says their religion was a dead ritual. Their religion was a dead ritual. Their religion was a dead ritual, ritual and not a living relationship. You hear what I said? Don't, don't let your, your religion be the ritual of what you do. That, that, that in and out, that, that ministry in and out I'm doing. You know, I'm doing that, that, that. It's not a relationship. I'm doing the ritual. The ritual uh, must be undergirded by a relationship. There's nothing wrong with the ritual if you don't let it die. There's it's a principle in there where James is talking about faith without 
works. James said, be faithful, but let your faith do something. If, if, if your faith doesn't do anything, not saying it's not faith, just saying it's dead faith. And something dead doesn't do anything. Your faith ought to do something to undergird the claim and the call. The gift that you use should be undergirded by the life, help me, Holy Ghost, right there, that you live. In fact, their external, their righteousness made them proud and not humble. Help me right there, Holy Ghost. Made them proud. They walked around accepting the accolades, chest out. I'm so and so. Proud and not humble. See, when you're serving the true and living God, you recognize he could have gotten Went under the bridge, got a wine old someone strung out on drugs, wherever, to the lowest crack in the community, and got someone, cleaned them up, and used them. In fact, it might be true with you. He may have reached in the cracks under the dipsy dumpster and got you out. And now you're going to lift yourself above someone else now. It, it almost you to think about God is using me. And I know me. I'm at my best of mess. And I almost you to think that God, a holy God, a God who know all about you. God, mm, he chose me. My, my, my. He chose me, God. You used me for this. No one else would have. Who would have thought? And then Jesus challenges us and says, our righteousness must exceed. He's talking to the, his followers. He says, your righteousness must exceed the establishment. Those who you're looking at as righteous and holy, and those who have all those positions, that are not living a life pointed toward the people of God at the lowest level of society. Who That's who he came to assist, who he came to help. He came to seek out the lost. But we live in a world where very often men and women in the religious ilk set themselves on pedestals. And tried to influence us that they're up there by the hand of God. Many, not all. So many. Jesus said, unless your righteousness is more than. I, I looked up that word exceeding in the in the Greek. In the Greek is perishu. Issue and it translated abounds a lot, abundance. When he said the word exceeded, as he incorporates this idea abundance much more than professional religious folk. You got to have a living version, exceed, increase. Super abound in quantity or quality. Jesus challenged his followers in a way that we should not think of professionals, religious folk, so high. Because quite often it's an affront to a very jacked up life. So why many uh, have walked away from the church. In our time, it's when they learned that that person that they were motivated by, captivated by, bowing down to, looking up to, 
was nothing but a front. A shyster. Nothing but artificial. A lot of folk, as I talked to them, just recently talking to a person who not giving his life to God, have not made God his choice, not sure he knows there's a, there's a higher power. Several of them I've talked to, there's a higher power, don't call it God, What's, what happened? What about the church? Well, you know, the hypocrisy that they've seen out of leaders in the church, out of people in the church, has discouraged them. And it's hard to convince them to give God a chance because man has failed them. Our righteousness cannot just be a call and a claim. Our righteousness has to be a way of life that uplifts, motivates, and assists all humanity to a better level and a better platform. Jesus challenged us. He said, your righteousness, the way you live, you got to live better than the Pharisees and then the scribes. These were the doctors, the lawyers, and the leaders in his time. He said, you have to have more. And that simply meant you have to live in a loving way. Lead your life in a way that you're not just kind, but you're concerned with those who can't help you, can't put dollars in your pocket. You have to be, be sacri sacrificial. Jesus said to them, unless your righteousness, your behavior, your ways, talking to them, is Better than folk you are bowing down to and looking up to. That's the way you treat others is better. Love others is better. He said, you shall in no wise, no case, no way enter the kingdom of God. He's teaching us that God will is that we will treat humanity in the dignified manner that it deserves because it's vessels that God can indwell by his Holy Spirit. It's vessels and made in the image of God. I made a little girl sad recently because I showed her, I, I took some blocks and I showed her her name. And she recognized that that's my name. That's my name. Well, in order to play another game, I had to mess up the blocks. And she got real sad. You messed up my name. When you're dealing with humans, remember that you're dealing with the image of God. Don't mess his image. Don't mess his image up. The challenge, you have to have more righteousness than position than titles. You got to have more righteous than the intellect, theological intellect. Righteousness is in what you do towards your fellow man. Amen. Amen. Listen, you can see that. It challenges me. It challenges me. It explains quite a bit to me. So these are the teachings out of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 uh, through verse 20. Your righteousness, exceeding righteousness. Mm -hmm. You heard this word this evening. If, if God has touched your heart and said, hey, that word was for you. My, my, my. If you haven't given your life to Christ, you want to do that, you can do that right now. You can give your life to the Lord of life. The Lord who saves life. If you want to do that, just repeat after me. If you've never been baptized, never confess Christ as your Savior. Never ask Him to come into your heart. Let's do that right now. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ 
as my dead, buried, and resurrected Savior. I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart and own me as your child. Amen. I welcome you. You're welcome to the household of faith, to the kingdom of God right now in the name of Jesus. And someone may not be a member, you've been baptized, you're already uh, a Christian and you want to fellowship with this family here at the St. Luke Christian Church, you can do that. Go to our website if you made a confession, go to our website. If you made a decision, go to our website, follow the join us, put your information out there, we'll pick it up. We will contact you sooner than later. Listen, this is Pastor T.C. Johnson. We're here at the St. Luke Christian Church where God is with us seeking to save exceeding righteousness. Be blessed.